The story that I'm about to retell follows the account of some developers who, while not wanting to speak on behalf of their entire studio, feel that they've had a year of hard work thrown down the drain because of some very unreasonable office politics. Now, in the interest of not compromising the careers of some very talented people at a very talented studio whose maximum talent potential is going far untapped, I have anonymous sources, I have circumstantial evidence, so for my own sake, let's all just regard what I'm about to say as an elaborately specific rumor. I feel like my reputation for accuracy, diligence, and fact-checking, at least when it comes to big secret scoops like this, should lend the story some credence. My sources in this case are in the multiples. There are a variety of positions and perspectives on this project, and though despite being unaware of each other, unconnected with each other, and not knowing the research I was doing on which project at the time, they've all fed me a lot of the same information. Claims that were contradictory to one another, or otherwise unverifiable, have been omitted, and I want you to be aware of these limitations of mine. Because here at the Super Bunny Hop Super Channel Super Sleuthing Spectacular Fiasco, video games are serious business. So without further ado, here's the story. In late 2011, the mood around the IDOS Montreal offices was high. Deus Ex Human Revolution had achieved record high scores for a modern Montreal studio, and the team had grand hopes for their next project, which started with the bright new RPG idea that the game's producer dreamed up during a vacation after their previous success. The project was to be heavily inspired by Final Fantasy, until the team was given the idea to plan it as a Final Fantasy, after being given its blessing by the Square Enix president, Yoichi Wada, who would visit them personally and advise them on their business. During one of these meetings, Wada decided to start talks about IDOS Montreal actually making this new RPG be the next flagship AAA Final Fantasy. Since 13 got terrible reviews and 14 had a terrible launch, he wasn't exactly confident on relying on the Japanese studios. During this period, the project became Project W, under the lofty ambitions of it being the first Western Final Fantasy game. The Deus Ex core team assembled some planning, some art, and some basic game design in a super secret office high up in their towers until a business trip to Japan in 2012, when it came time for them to make the big pitch to over 12 Japanese directors of the Final Fantasy series. So imagine, if you will, an epic space opera RPG concentrating on what Western fans find so appealing about Final Fantasy in the first place. Project Nova, aka Project W, was to be a a sci-fi space opera with a visually unique motif of fractals, creating a kaleidoscopic colorful backdrop of outer space that wasn't empty blackness, with a high-tech engine capable of rendering seamless interplanetary takeoffs and landings long before No Man's Sky ever tried it. Our hero is pursuing the galaxy for a lost love interest named Nova, until they develop a love triangle with a 25-year-old femme fatale mercenary who leads us away and astray across a full-length RPG adventure that would have used the tension between those three main characters to form a party of entertaining and visually gorgeous action. Sounds pretty neato, eh? Eh? Right, guys? It got rejected. After the failed pitch to Japan, Project W did continue to stay in development, this time as its own original IP, Project Nova, though a number of contributing roadblocks led to a soft cancellation in mid-2013. Publishers from Microsoft and Sony were unwilling to pick up the expensive and risky project in favor of more safer sequels to Deus Ex and Tomb Raider, which is the work Eidos Montreal had better luck getting compared to doing a more original project of their own. <clears throat> okay, so now that the stuff that hasn't been revealed before is, is, is on the table, it's time to slide some real news across the screen. The changing of the Square Enix presidents was the beginning of the end, as Wada's confusing support for W was finally non-existent following his replacement with Yotsuke Matsuda, who has presided over an era of recovering their Japanese IPs, while far more problematic support has been faced by Square Enix Western IPs. And while Wada may have given the West his blessing, don't forget that Final Fantasy is way bigger of a deal in Japan. A chunk of Universal Studios Japan is themed after it, they have restaurants for it, the merchandising for it can be found everywhere, and Wada's fate that foreigners could also do Final Fantasy justice was not shared by the other Japanese executives. So back in 2013, Stefan Dastou, the general manager and founding president of Eidos Montreal, a very involved president who would accept awards alongside the developers, resigned, citing frustration over poor communication with the international branches of Square Enix. 
Quote, the lack of leadership, the lack of courage, and the lack of communication were so evident that I wasn't able to conduct my job correctly, he said. I realized that our differences were irreconcilable and that the best decision was unfortunately to part ways. After they finished the Human Revolution DLC in 2011, the Deus Ex core team had spent a year working on Project W up until its cancellation, while the Thief team were having their own problems which, to the outside world, would have looked like a contributor to the year-long revenue shortfall that Square Enix included as part of its reported extraordinary loss in 2013, resulting in a company-wide effort to reshuffle their assets, restructure their hierarchies, and this super-secret project that no one knew about, a project too expensive to finish, had to get thrown away. That seemingly unproductive year didn't project a good image of the studio to Japan, even though Human Revolution was one of Square Enix's few successes during their bad years. Which all points to the decreased involvement of Matsuda and Square Enix's Western subsidiaries, unlike the more personal involvement made by Wada. Here's a picture of Deus Ex's art director, Jonathan Jacques Belletet, with Yoichi Wada during a business trip to Japan in late 2012. Though not publicized, this is no secret. It was found on the archives of his Tumblr, where, in the months prior, he was also reblogging fractal backgrounds and science fiction space tech that looked like this, 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 or this. Around the same time he was hyping fans up for a big announcement coming up soon, which didn't really happen. At the time of this message, Thief 4 had been known about as far back as 2009, and the Mankind Divided announcement was still two and a half years away. Also out there on the internet is the description of the story that I was given, which matches this Silicon Era story of an unannounced IDOS Montreal project from the same time, and just about the only other media coverage this game's gotten, from another YouTube video by Dark Pixel Gaming, mentions a collaboration with Weta Studios in New Zealand to help out. Weta did the effects art for District 9 and The Hobbit, and this is something my sources didn't mention, so I would have omitted it until... Well, guess who I found posted a bunch of Tumblr entries about visiting the Weta workshops in New Zealand in the winter of 2012. All of this is why earlier I said that I don't have a lot of proof here and that my evidence is circumstantial. However, I hope that the specificity of my claims and the matchups with the existing material do lend me some credibility here. I'm actually really eager to see if real art from this game leaks shortly after the release of this video, but what I feel is a bigger story here than the nature of this cancelled game is the nature of its cancellation. Believe it or not, this story has happened before, with a cancelled game codenamed Fortress, a project attempted by the Swedish developer Grin in 2009, who had also been given their blessing to make the first Western Final Fantasy spin-off by Square Enix. Except this one was going to be a much more minor project, set in the Ivalice world, spinning off of Final Fantasy XII. After a year of hard work had been put in, their milestones got rejected again and again, with Square Enix bosses claiming these concepts weren't Final Fantasy enough. And I wonder if that's what happened here. Grin steadily went bankrupt, spending money on a project that never would have released. In Project W's case, the studio survived, but all related artworks and materials were ordered to be destroyed. While Wada gave Eidos Montreal his personal touch and a lot of faith and confidence in playing with the classic Japanese franchise, Matsuda's orders instead came in remotely through confused middlemen, and Japan's decision to keep their Japanese franchises Japanese preceded a litany of troubles with their Western partners as well. So in 2013, while Japan was busy cleaning up, reviving, and re-engineering Final Fantasy vs. 13 into what was actually going to be the next big FF, that is, the real FF15, Eidos's Thief reboot got stuck in a development hell. Hell. Thanks to a situation of petty office politics, dividing the staff into cliques and muddling the production in a way not dissimilar to what happened to Project W. Soon, the studio faced layoffs, as more of their projects got cancelled for good. However, fingers of Square Enix's international management are more directly evident in the release of Deus Ex Mankind Divided, a game that reviewed well despite suffering from poor sales, likely informed by news of a rushed ending and obnoxious microtransactions. Explained by reports that Square Enix, this time from the London branch, had given Eidos a multitude of confusing orders to split the game up for sequels and allocate resources towards microtransaction-driven secondary modes. Mankind Divided was being built around the same time of another scrapped collaboration, this time between Japan's FF15 team and Avalanche Studios, who announced in 2015 that they would work together on the game's vehicle and open-world game tech. As time would go on, no one heard of this ever again, and Avalanche is nowhere to be found in the game's credits. 
And then there's the crisis faced by IO Interactive, who found themselves straight slashed off of Square Enix's lineup in 2017 following disappointing sales of a Hitman sequel that was split up into multiple episodes because of Square Enix's inability to shift deadlines to something the studio could more realistically work with. So if you want yet another case outlining the inefficiencies of big business, or the meddling of big publishers, or of Japanese pride and traditionalism stifling the efforts of video games elsewhere, here's another example of Eidos Montreal trying their darndest to make good games despite having to put up with a lot of bullshit.